Welcome everyone to another episode of Bazelli's Wine TV, the most interesting wine channel on the internet. Why are we the most interesting wine channel on the internet? Because we consider wine a food. Thank you to special perennial guest Holly Rocco Faraci of Republic of National Distributing Company. <laughs> I'm Mike Bazelli, your host. And today we are talking geological lasagna with Chris Benzinger of Benzinger Family Winery. Boom. Mike, Holly, how are you guys? Doing great. How Doing about you? Doing great. So excited. I get to drink wine in the morning. <laughs> Breakfast Wine all the time. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> wine is a food on this show. Thank you, Chris. Awesome, awesome. Chris, how long have you guys been in the wine business? Um, <laughs> my oldest brother, Mike, uh, fell in love with wine, and he didn't want to sell it now that he knew that this wine could be made in California. So once he graduated, he moved out to the West Coast. He moved to Livermore, got a job in a funky old winery down there, and he learned the craft. And after about five years, he felt that he had enough knowledge, and he knew that California was going to explode at some point. So he had this dream of starting a family winery, but he had no money. This was before the Judgment of Paris? This is 1972. So yes. So yes. Um, and so he goes, Dad, let's start a family business. Um, my dad was like, that's a great idea. And he says, look, I'll find the money, you find the location. So we thought this was some pipe dream that was you know, 5, 10, 15 years down the road. But in six months, six months, I'm, I'm doing a version of the Beverly Hillbillies in reverse. I'm moving from New York City, sidewalks, streetlights, subways, delis. Prostitutes. To prostitutes, <laughs> heroin addicts. Heroin, this is pre -Rudy. Yeah, 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 Yo, yeah, definitely. This is, this, is Ed, this is Ed Koch, yeah, Ed, Ed Koch. Koch. Good um, times. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, the family moved out to this beautiful bucolic hillsides of Glen Ellen, California, which Jack Lennon called the Valley of the Moon. We bought this funky old ranch. It had been settled in the 1860s, and then the 06 earthquake and prohibition wiped it out, and they literally locked the front gates. And for 55 years, it was a ghost town. Just abandoned. Abandoned. <clears throat> and a doctor found the place, and he was a little bit ahead of his time. He believed in the medicinal uses of marijuana in the 70s. Wow. Right? So, very ahead of his time. Yeah, very. But he, uh, he was known for a wine he called Cannabis Sauvignon, where he would blend... <laughs> the beautiful Cabernet with about 10 pounds of killer Sonoma County pot. That's not a, that's not a play on words. That's the best play on words yeah. I've ever heard. <laughs> but he, uh, um, that, I, I'm pretty sure that's how my brother found it. But he, my brother fell in love with this ranch. He had this epiphany that this was the spot. Somehow convinced a good doctor to sell. And then my family moved in. And this is now 1979. Halloween is when we, the Benziger family, 13 of us in the first wave. And Michael Myers. Yeah. <laughs> and, moved in. and we moved in. And uh, the cool part, although back then we didn't think so, we had pretty much shot our bolt buying the ranch. We had no money, so we were the construction crew, we were the vineyard crew. But it forced us early on to get our hands into the soil, to build the ranch. The wine is made in the vineyard. It, it absolutely and it taught, taught us early on the most important things were not the shiny tanks, the pretty gardens, but something more intrinsic, and that was that family passion. And that was 42 years ago. And, Did you uh, even have a tasting room? No, we, we, had a, we had a picnic table. You had a picnic, picnic table. Picnic table. Hey, you guys go drink over there. <laughs> yeah, and, and we moved it wherever we weren't working, you know? So like the, the, the forklift, because it was like propane then, it would be like spewing out the, the terrible smoke, like, all right, we gotta move the tasting room. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I bet the, the today's your tasting room is like some million dollar facility. But. Yeah, it's it, to be honest with you, it's uh, the tasting room has always kind of been the, probably the low point. But we push everybody, thanks to COVID, the good side effect is now we pushed everybody outside. And in California, you can be outside 11 months out of the year. So now we have an outdoor tasting room patio that's primo. Awesome. Um, do I, can I tell you about our first harvest? Because sure. it's kind of funny. You've got like three hours. All right. So, so this wine here, our, our, our 2020 Sauvignon Blanc, um, this is the first time we made this wine. You'll get a kick. So we thought we were hot shot New Yorkers, we're, and we go and we start building the winery. I was surprised that Sauvignon Blanc was your first varietal. Yeah, very first. And, but it's got a great story. So we're spending all summer to build the winery, and unfortunately, we didn't know what we were doing. And the building went up very slowly. And the harvest that year was warm, so the grapes were coming in early. And the winery wasn't built. It was half built. We didn't have a roof. Uh, we didn't have doors. Uh, we bought every extension cord to run the equipment because it wasn't built yet. Uh, the, the electricity wasn't in yet. We used car headlights to see at night. And the worst part was our stainless steel tanks, which we had purchased, were going to arrive a week late. 
If this isn't a bootstrap success story, you're not smashing that like button. <laughs> Please unsubscribe. Holly and I are canceling the show. <laughs> the, uh, so the grapes were coming, and I remember my dad, you know, he's the product of World War II, the Depression, all this stuff, so nothing phased him. And we had a junkyard guy that he would, um, he would get secondhand equipment because we, were, we, weren't, uh, we were broke. So this guy could have had his own show. He was a hell's angel. His name was Barry Gold. Love that name. He was six foot five. He was a giant of a guy. I was scared to death of him. Huge, bushy black beard, the ponytail, the leather vest, the jingly chains, the denim. I mean, he was one <laughs> tough hombre. And uh, I remember my dad calling up and going, hey, Barry, my kid screwed up again. We don't have stainless steel tanks and we need it. I guess the grapes are coming in early or something. So can you get me 2,000 gallon stainless, stainless steel tanks over here? And he's like, yeah, Bruno, when do you want them? I need them here tomorrow morning early. It's like, all right. So we're like, oh, okay, where's Barry gonna find stainless steel? Some guy owed him money, right? So he went to a dairy that owed him money. He hooked his tow trucks to two dairy tanker trucks, said, got milk, towed him over. The, our first wine tanks had milk in them from dairy tanker trucks. My first job was to clean the milk out. Six hours later, this first Sauvignon Blancs came in. We pressed oh, it. Oh, we're wasting our Time. Me and you are going to write the screenplay right now. <laughs> this is an amazing story. It would make this a good is the movie. best origin story I've heard. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and uh, and uh, literally uh, this this winery that Rube Goldberg should have designed, you know, with you know car headlights and just this. We used dry ice to keep the temperatures cool. We made our first wine, and believe it or not, it turned out pretty good. We entered it the next year into uh, the local county fair. Because there was no Marvin Schenken back then, there was no Robert Parker. It was just the county fair. So after they judged the, the, the apple pies and the photography or whatever. Let's taste some wine. Let's taste some wine. And uh, our wine won top honors. Wow. Yeah. I love this wine because, um, first of all, it's the only wine I know that can go with breakfast. Um, how appropriate. This yeah. is, we're filming at 9.30 today. Uh, Holly, um, the nose is, is amazing. Um, can you give us some uh, notes? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we've got all your beautiful citrus fruits. It's melon and, you know, it's even a little tropical in there. I mean, it's just a beautiful Sauvignon Blanc. And when you taste it, you get almost like a creamy kind of mouthfeel, like a fuller mouthfeel than, than maybe a typical um, Sauvignon Blanc. No you know? cat piss. No, 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 no kitty litter. Thank no God. Kitty litter. It, it's, yeah. it's more like, you know, I've heard you kind of liken this a little bit more to a Sensair style, you know, a little more minerality and then... Um, really pretty acidity to this. That's kind of how I, I played it off. That's what we originally wanted to do, was uh, have it in um, a Sancer style. So stainless steel fermented, but then what we do is we rack it off the gross leaves and then move it onto the fine leaves and we stir that, you know, botanage. I mean, it sounds better in French, right? <laughs> um, and that adds that French kind of, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, didn't someone call them freedom fries once? Or, freedom fries. Yeah. Right, we, I, 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 don't want to go down, I don't want to go down that a wormhole. That's fine. Um, but that, uh, that Lee's contact, Adds that minerality in there mm -hmm. that that I like because you want what makes Sauvignon Blanc such a great wine is its simplicity is its complexity in a way that it it's light it's clean it's crisp and that cleanses the palate so that you can have that next bite of food and it, you know this wine hasn't met an oyster it doesn't love yeah that so, that whetstone like minerality is yeah, really right? coming through on this right uh, now obviously seafood uh, Asian cuisine it's a, it's it's unbelievable but you can also just Pat it on the old patio. And it's not just any minerality, it's whetstone minerality, people. That's what you're getting in this bottle. Um, how much does this typically retail for, Chris? Uh, oh, um, 14, 15? 14, 15, somewhere around Tremendous there. Tremendous value. Yeah. I mean, I've had some $30 Sauv Blancs. This can go toe to toe with them. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Tremendous value. And then, you know, all of, the, all of our wines, which we believe in very much, is how we grow the grapes. We were talking about this earlier because. The, uh, the guys that grow the grapes, they don't want to be swimming in chemicals. The grapes don't want to be swimming in chemicals. And quite frankly, the better the, 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 when you push those chemicals out, the roots go deep, you get a more authentic wine. That, that one thing we're always chasing. Geological terroir. lasagna. Yeah, yes. and, and that, that's, that's really important because we kind of learned the hard way. We've been farming for 40 years, and in the early 80s, everybody was farming, actually everybody, but most people were farming conventionally. I kind of call conventional spray and pray. The Monsanto guy would show up, he'd huck off a big bag of methyl ethyl bad stuff, you go put it in your nifty 50 spray rig and and you'd kill the leaf hoppers or whatever you were trying to kill.
but then gravity takes all that poison into terra firma, the biggest biomass on the planet, topsoil, kills that, that collapses or blows away or runs into the creek and screws up the fishes. But now the roots are like, they're like, what's going on here? So they kind of uh, stall out. Now the farmer has to add water and chemical fertilizers at the surface. You create a plume. Now the roots, instead of going down deep, go up. You get this shallow anemic root system. But the plants are like, okay, here, if this is where I got to be, this is where I got to be. But you're not getting any, you're getting maybe varietal correctness, but that's where it ends. No terroir, no vintage variation. No depth. No, no depth, character. No character. Yeah. The other way is you push, you stop pushing nature out and you invite it in using natural systems, gardens, animals, all sorts. We could talk all day about it, but you basically build this beautiful ecosystem around the vineyards and you let nature take care of nature. And once the flywheel of nature starts rolling, it takes a while, five years or so, then it starts to feed on itself and you don't really have to do anything. You just got to have to be the gardener or the shepherd, just kind of keep it all on the rails. But it takes care of itself and it's amazing because I watched our vineyard go from 50 years being vacant, a beautiful wild primordial spot to killing it where the only thing I heard was wind, no birds, no insects because we had killed it with chemicals and then I watched us bring it back and that was probably the most rewarding is to see this piece of property come back and now you sit in the, in the middle of the vineyard and you hear the birds, the, 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 the uh, sheep, the cows, the insects, just the cacophony of life. I think the passion is obvious, but the appreciation for the terroir is epic. Well, and wow. it's, it's what we all want, right? We want something that is authentic, right? We're all strive for authenticity. And wine is, gives it to us as long as we kind of almost leave it alone so those roots can go down. So you were on an old volcano, right? And it's how we got the term geological lasagna. Snow Mountain is an old volcano, extinct, I hope. And when it really? blew up, um, it, the basement rock was basalt. Then this red aggregate f fell on top of it. Then the ash, which they call welded tufa. Then you had obsidian, breccia, boom, boom, boom. And it's, it's like brown, red, white, brown. And it looks like, and when we dig back up pits, you're like, my God, that's lasagna. <laughs> so, so Chris, Chris, this education is amazing. Did you go to UC Davis? I did not. I did not. Okay, but you're talking like a UC Davis viticultural I, professor right now. I, I just learned everything. I, I, I've done a bunch of extension classes. I don't have a degree. Uh, I wasn't smart enough to get into Davis. Um, <laughs> but um, I learned everything at the foot of some of the most impressive people. Alan York, uh, Lydia, uh, the, the, uh, the Bourguignons, who are incredible terroirist, um, Pedro Parra. I mean, these guys are on the cutting edge. And uh, I, I, you know, one great thing about being the youngest of a big family is you're all ears, right? So you just listen, listen, listen. And these guys gave us, uh, and, 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 and girls, um, gave us this in, these incredible insights. You just have to listen. Alan York was probably the most amazing. He's the guru of biodynamics. And before he passed, I got to spend five years in the vineyard with him. And that's, you know, that's like sitting underneath, like, Play-Doh, right, for winemaking. You know, you just kind of sit there and just, yes, master, tell me more. <laughs> yes. Smarts, bootstraps, and hard work. And the baby of the family. Yeah. Wow. So you had to elbow your way at, you know, uh, Yeah, yeah, and totally <laughs> obnoxious, you know. But the cool thing is, because of my brothers, I mean, as long as they didn't burn the house down or wreck a car, I was like, like nothing I could do wrong. <laughs> but we want to know about the wine in the pool. Oh, all right, that's, that's actually. you have a picture. I have a picture of, yeah, I do, I do. Okay, so we're gonna uh, include that in this, in this I, I have uh, I have a picture of the house burning interview. down. Okay. Fully involved. Include all that and then I have interview. a picture of the of the uh, pool. That's, the I think, the most ultimate visual, wine in the pool. But uh, explain for our audience. Uh, okay, so. Um, it's tragic, though. There's a tragic portion but it's to But it. it's got a great silver lining. Yes. So in 2017, we had the big fires, right? And there was multiple fires. The one that burned us down was called the Nuns Canyon Fire. And unfortunately, I live at the entrance of Nuns Canyon. So it was a horrible windy night, 80 mile, literally hurricane force winds that were, had two to 3% humidity. So they were as dry as you could be, like they're coming off the desert and they were hot. They were like 80 uh, to 90 degree winds. So they were like a gigantic blow dryer. They came out at the, in October when everything has been dry all year. We hadn't had rain since April. And once the spark started, the fire took off like, like a dragon in Game of Thrones. Just, and it came out of the canyon and hit our block. And the first, once the first house caught on fire, 
all the sparks just would, that house would fall and go on. And basically we woke up at 1130 at night and realized that our whole neighborhood's on fire. So you, you panic, you get everyone up, you get the animals in the car. You, I had to wake up my in-laws there in their 80s, um, get their medicines. I finally got everyone in the car and we said, okay, we're going to meet here. And then I had about two minutes as my neighbor's house is collapsing and all the sparks are hitting my place. I can start to see my roof go up. I'm running around, like you see in the movie, with a t-shirt on and a garden hose. It's like dripping, like, like I'm gonna put out this wall of fire. It's like I'm watching Ronin right now. Yeah, like, okay. and, uh, and literally you hear the roar of the fire, the wind, and then you hear the shriek of propane tanks blowing up. It's like Armageddon. And uh, I jumped in the pool because I was getting sparks on me. I'm like, oh shit, the pool. And I'm like, and then I'm like, I'm thinking, I could whine in Titanic, you know. I, they pulled the schwine out. I don't know where my brain was going, but I'm like, and my wine cellar was outside. I had a downstairs staircase. It was kind of a root cellar. So I ran past and I went, oh, at least I'm going to get my wine. And I ran down there and grabbed handfuls of, I went to my best section, handfuls and run up. I was dropping them, but I didn't Tribute. care. Yeah, and just chucking them in, chucking them in. And I got about 40 to 50 bottles into the pool. And then Michael Mann... That's for you. You will never <laughs> top this cinematically. And, and they and they uh, I came back about three weeks later. The labels had long peeled off and stuff, but the wine was in great condition. Awesome. And wine I went I went the pool. And I went fishing. I went fishing. <laughs> yeah. Wow, wow. So now you got us really intrigued about the juice. It's too yeah. good to leave in the house. All the Pokemon cards are gone, but the juice was too good. He had to, he chucked them in the pool. Yeah, save yeah, the juice. I, I know. I didn't save, I, like, I, I collected these old maps. They stayed in the house and burned. All, like, the, the you know, that little thing bored you, like, your kid's height, that that burned down. You know, all the really sentimental stuff. Instead, I, I go for the wine. I mean, <laughs> respect, respect. <laughs> there's probably a lot of, uh, you know, I, I bet a psychiatrist could have a field day with that one. Wine is a food on this show. It yes, is. It is. It is. The Sauvignon Blanc was amazing. Uh, 15 bucks retail. Yeah. You're not going to get more value than that. This may be my favorite Sauvignon Blanc of 2022. It, it is. Nice. Can, we, can we? I love it. I, no, so I will say this. I mean, so you know I'm a Chard drinker. I'm yes, a Chardonnay girl. But this is a Sauvignon Blanc that I love because it's got that nice mouthfeel to it. So anybody out there that's uh, that's really more of a Chardonnay drinker and you know tends to maybe not go to Sauvignon Blanc, you think it's either too grassy or too acidic. Uh, yeah. Please try this Benzinger Sauvignon Blanc. It's great for just drinking on a patio. Uh, the patio before founder, a meal, you know, patio cocktail founder. hour, you know, just and it's relatively low alcohol breakfast. too. That's kind of the fun part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really is a fantastic Sauvignon Blanc. So please try it. What is the alcohol content? That's it's a thirteen. Good point. Thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Usually you'd see fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So Chardonnay. Um, Chardonnay. You know, sometimes Chardonnay gets a little bit of flack. You know, oh, anything but Chardonnay. I love Chardonnay. It's a noble grape. And from a winemaker, there's no other varietal that has more latitude on the crush pad than Chardonnay. That's why they call it the winemaker's grape, right? When, a, when the picking bin of Chardonnay gets there, it could, has, it could be anything from a beautiful, lean, clean Chablis, which I really love, or it could be that big butter kiss butter bomb that so many other people really enjoy, or anything in between. So here I went kind of right up the middle, right? Trying to, if you, this is a bowling ball, I'm heading for the kingpin right up there. And so, what we do here is, the, um, this is from Sonoma County, this is Canaros fruit. Chardonnay is a Burgundian grape. It's, it's um, thin-skinned, it's cranky. Uh, so yeah, it's all about location, location. The Canaros is wonderful because this alluvial fan comes off the Mayacomas Mountains and right into San Pablo Bay, which is a four bay of San Francisco. And what comes out of there? Fog. June, July, August. That great saying, the coldest winter I ever spent was my summer in San Francisco, Mr. Twain. Um, that fog, June, July, August, allows these grapes to slowly ripen. We call it hang time. So we can push the harvest until mid-September. Most Chardonnays are being picked late August, uh, the first week. So that hang time allows the acidity to stay high, yet the fruit to mature. And uh, so we get this beautiful kind of uh, lemon, uh, some kind of maybe white peach, uh, but the best part about it is we harvest at night because at night the grape skins contract, so they're a little bit more durable. They don't tear or get bruised. Bring it back to the winery. You think they just harvest any freaking time of the day? They harvest no at, at night. night. It's, it's there's it's, a reason. It's, it's yeah. key. As a matter of fact, during harvest, you look like it looks like UFOs are landing in the vineyard because you see these big lights um, out there. Um, we need a pic of that. 
Yeah, it's really cool. I got some if you okay, want. Okay, cool. Um, and then uh, we bring it back to the crush pad. It's pressed, free run. And then it goes into Hungarian oak barrels. Um, and I let do surleys on it. Um, Why not the French oak? So, a good question. Uh, two things. One, French oak, uh, I mean, um, uh, Hungarian oak is done in very traditional ways. French oak is too. But they, they literally, when they cut the trees, they build a rick and they let it sit in the forest for two years and it leaches out all the wood tannins. It Instead has of that fauna on it, right? So it's like a natural seasoning and it really does impart, it, it, I mean, it, it, it helps with the wine it, and the end wine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's also old growth forest, not old growth forest. The wood doesn't dry out? It does. That's it does. what you want. You want it to. It leaches out the wood tannins, the the, okay. the bitter part. And what, like in a in a in a, a modern barrel, they simulate. They basically oven it, bake the bake and wash it out. Here, nature does it for you. And it's also in forests that the trees go really slowly, so the 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 bands, um, you know, the tree rings we used to count as kids, they're really really tight. And so that's going to add subtlety. So then they take this to French coopers who make it, and really. It's um, about money, so you get basically a French barrel at about a th um, two thirds the price. So, and I can put that right to the bottom line here, so I can get the Chardonnay under twenty bucks. Under twenty bucks for this Chard. You can look for Carneros Chard. That's going to be forty fifty bucks. Forty fifty bucks. And this thing is, you know. You yeah. could look for Hungarian oak, or you could just look for Benzinger Chard. Yeah. <laughs> we made it easy. Yeah. Chris made it easy for you. Yeah, and the people that grow this, the San Giacomos, they are the first family of, of, of Chardonnay growing. This, the Caneros, the San Giacomo Vineyards is big. It's over 1,000 acres and probably 40 different wineries. Pull from there. Yeah, but all they're a lot high more expensive. End. Yeah, yeah. You know, Rombauer yeah. And, and a bunch of Napa uh, characters. Um, but I love this because it's, um, I love it right up the middle because it's, it's got acid, which is important. But it also has this creaminess. For me, it's like drinking um, a lemon meringue pie because mm -hmm. they have that meringue creaminess, almost a little toastiness, but this beautiful citrus note, and then this acid backbone. That... I smell the pie on the nose too. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Mm. Beautiful. And then roast chicken. Yeah. Um, uh, lighter pastas. Um, like squash, like in the fall, like squash ravioli and all that. Go. It would be delicious. With that. Yeah, probably even. Probably, uh, uh, you know, this could uh, edge out Pinot Noir for Turkey. Um, but it also, this could yeah. be just your cocktail shard. This in kills yeah. it at yeah. tastings. It has to kill it. This is a crowd pleaser. Yeah, it's, a, sure. it's, a, it's a, and it's, a, it's the people that like oak will go, oh, there's some oak in that. And then the people that don't want oak, they're like, oh, it's not that bad. The oak is so subtle, though. Yeah. Yeah, unlike me. It's <laughs> subtle. <laughs> the baby of the Benzinger yeah. clan. <laughs> Delicious. Oh my, did I pick my favorite Shardy at Holly? You did, but it was, you might have a rival. I think I have a close rival. I do. I don't know, does this edge it out? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the win, I'll take the win. Absolutely. We might, you don't we see, might you don't see that, I, but I have a shiv under the table and I'm just, yeah. I, I got his femoral artery right he's here. From, yeah. He's from New York, yeah. New York You're Italian. using the yeah, cattle yeah, prod yeah, yeah. under the table. See, he's a former bootlegger. They know how to get things done with baseball bats. What is that which gives me joy? Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We might have two favorites going. Well, here, you're, so you're, you're, you're 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 uh, you're uh, you're uh, from the metropolitan area. Remember Bat Day? They used to oh, at yeah, Yankee Stadium. Yeah, they used to give out these little hand bats, and they did it for a few years. Then they realized that they were just beating each other up with it. So, you know, bad idea. Yeah, it's it's like giving a mob <laughs> torches and pitchforks. You know. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, that's the Chardonnay. That's Not the Chardonnay. Bad. Um, little uh, caveat, guys. The, so Chris um, headed over here from, where'd you head over from? Uh, where'd I head over? Old, old, old Town? Okay, so the wines yeah. got a little cold. We're in the middle of Fe or the, what, the end of February. Wines were a little cold. He's like, we got to warm these wines up. So he pours them in the glasses. Are they warm now, Chris? They're getting there. Yeah, they're, they're okay. They're, they're warm. They're good. He said they're getting there. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. this is a, a, actually a good moment about, like, serving temperature of red wines, right? Yeah. So a lot of times red wines are served too warm because... Our house temperature, you know, usually around 68, 70, sometimes it's warmer, uh, you know, and so, whereas the service temperature of red should be kind of, hmm, cellar 65, temp. Yeah, 60, cellar temp. Because you, you, know, you want it to warm up right? in the glass, right? The worst thing in the world is hot red wine. Yeah. 
Um, like you're down in Florida sometimes, and if the if you're in and or here when it gets warm, if the wine doesn't come out and have a little condensation on it, send it back because you can, it always can cool up. It really sucks when it's hot because then you got to throw an ice cube in it or something like that because hot red wine, basically the alcohol takes over, and it just tastes like you're drinking dry cleaning fluid or something. So, uh, don't do it. <laughs> now, just say no to red hot red wine. Yeah. Are we going for the cab or the tribute first? Okay, so we're going to do the tribute first here. Okay. All right, so this is a little project that, that I started a couple years ago. I got really nostalgic because, you know, I told you all these great stories uh, at the beginning, but unfortunately time marches on, Mike. And my parents died young, uh, Bruno and Helen, God bless them. Uh, How young? My dad died at 62, my mom at 72. Mm -hmm. And my mom, Helen, you would have loved her. She was, my dad was the maverick, you know, breaking the Marine, let's go out to California and do it. And my mom was Mother Teresa. She's like, okay boys, come here. I love you all, you're all my favorites. And she would, she cooked lunch. She first cooked all our meals, but as more employees came in, she cooked lunch for everybody. When she passed away, she was cooking lunch for 100 employees wow. five days a week. Wow. We called it hot and a lot, Helen's love. And if you stayed the night, she would cook you breakfast. And she wore a blue house coat. Her nickname was Bluey. And she was five foot four. She had curly hair and she had these worry hands. She'd, and you'd come downstairs, a little blurry eyed from partying with us the night before. And she'd go, um, Good morning. Were you bad with the boys last night? Um, I have some lovely scrambled eggs and bacon, or I can make you some lovely French toast. And she'd go, Ooh, you don't look so well. How about, my boys are so bad. How about just some water and some aspirins, darling? Let Helen take care of you. Okay. Uh, okay. th this is for Helen. Helen from is, Glen Ellen. This is for Helen from <laughs> Glen Ellen. Ellen. We love you, Mom. I love you. I miss you. you. I've forgotten. Legends never die. Every day, Mom. And this is for Mom. So, so tribute is is a, um, a thank you to my family, thank to my mom, mom and dad. Thank you to Mom. To to yes. my brothers and sisters, everything that made it happen. Wow. And this is this is an amazing Good. little one. <laughs> right, right. And and here's the deal. Um, I wanted and to make this, price yeah, I wanted to make this um, fun and approachable like my family. I'm trying to, this is like the Benziger family in a bottle. Um, so I had to make it approachable, had to make it um, accessible. And it comes from two killer vineyards. One is down in Paso, it's in the Creston District. And Paso is known for beautiful, jammy red wines. I mean, we're talking cherry bombs and blueberry. It's my spice rack, excuse me, my fruit basket. And um, the culture's bohemian. Yeah, and yeah. then you go up to an area that nobody's really ever heard of. It's called the Piscines. It's just east of Monterey. It's the old Donati Ranch. Um, beautiful place, just below the Pinnacles. But when you come over, you drive for 20 minutes, you don't see anything. Then you come over this rise and you see this rip in the earth. You're like, what the heck is that? Get a little closer. It's the freaking San Andreas Fault. Now being a New Yorker, you're like, that's like, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're trying to you put your feet, I'm on one continent, yeah. I'm on another one. The I North think it's the big yeah, 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 exactly. The North American plate and the Pacific plate jam underneath this thing, and it's like God shuffled the deck of earth. So you have metamorphic rock, uh, sedimentary rock under here, and it's in a cooler area. It's bent towards the Pacific. So that is my spice rack that gives me these cassis chocolate notes, and that's about 40% of the blend. Um, and then it sees about 14 months in French oak, and you get this really amazing wine that kind of over delivers. You've got the Although that's a really... And over then you killed it on the this Europeanness. It has this Italian sensibility. Mm -hmm. It does, right? I call mm -hmm. those furry tannins. Those are the furry tannins. The furry tannins. They add mm -hmm. structure, yet they're not going to chase you away. And it has a good acidity and you know, beautifully. And it, and, uh, and it has the yum factor. This is yeah. not the. Wait, what grapes are we using in this? This Cabernet. is almost all Cabernet with a little bit of Merlot. But this is not your run-of-the-mill Cabernet. No, this is not. Adam. This is no. not mega purple. Thank you. A sweet, um, you know, it's it, those wines are like like you're drinking flat Coca Cola, uh, I think. And there's yeah. a lot, and they're at every freaking price point. As a matter of fact, a lot of the higher priced wines are really um, overdone. They're just, it's like oh, it's like expected, bad plastic yeah. surgery, man. It's just <laughs> like. And the, the, there's tannins, but like you said, it's furry tannins, it's not stringent tannins. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so the finish is that old world, beautiful finish. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's hard because, first of all, wine, particularly red wine, um, you want it to age, but 95% 90 of the wine that's purchased is consumed within 24 hours. So you need to make a wine that is 
one, gonna be okay in the glass tonight, but it's probably gonna be okay for the next couple years. So this is 24 months of ageability? Easily. And the screw cap kind of, the, 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 st the Stelvin, that's a good indication when you're buying wine. A, a good winemaker, if it's a Stelvin, they're saying, drink it in two to three years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, after that, then you probably want a cork for microoxygenation. But corks are faulty, man, because uh, you get a percentage of them that they'll go bad. I mean, how about if you're flu and like 2% of your plane flights crash? Like, well, we thought we were going to make it to JFK, <laughs> but the plane's corked. We're going to, we're, we're going to. Yeah. We're, <laughs> Thanks for flying. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it's crazy. So I, Chris, I didn't know we were going to have this much fun today, man. I, I kind of had an back? idea. Can you come back? 100%. I kind of, I was watching. I wanted, everyone was bragging about how great you were. And I was like, oh, I, I, let I me pay, see. They're all my payroll. They're yeah. all my payroll. No, I'm, I'm like, I, yeah, okay. Let me, I'll, I'll, I'll be the judge of that. So I'm watching your videos and I'm like, this dude's good. <laughs> we're trying. Yeah. We're trying. We're new to the wine game. But thanks to Holly Rockefeller, she was instrumental in. in, uh, in doing we, you what know what we should now. do? We should um, we should go on location, one, we or do a vlog at your. Place. Yeah, yeah. Come out yeah. there, and we could walk like harvest. We, are we, down. we could go see the optical sorter, um, which is the freaking coolest machine ever. You gotta do that. When you it gotta, pops the grapes out, it's just a little guy go bing. Yeah, and bing, and bing. and it and it uses lasers. I'm like freaking Austin Powers. I got lasers on my first pad. Like, really Begin. Laser ignition sequence. Begin laser ignition. Yeah. <laughs> camera right now. Yeah. No tribute is definitely a tribute. Amazing. Yeah, and and like you said, it's it's um, again one of those wines under twenty bucks. This you're is have a sleeper, fun. Chris. I mean, I, all day long. This will be on CaseWineLife.com. This is if you're really about that Case Wine Life, you're gonna want to buy this. By and the you've case. got the great bottle. I mean, tribute. You have the. Oh yeah! Thanks bottle, for bringing it up. It's right? got a freaking it's cartouche. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's funny. Uh, again, going back to my dad, we imported a lot of uh, specialty spirits from Europe, and a lot of them had that. I didn't know it was called a cartouche. Um, I just called it a logo. And I, I remember uh, I would I would pour my dad. Um, like they probably don't do this today, but my dad would so I'd get home and he'd go, "Can I make you drink, Dad?" And and it was a scotch on on the rocks, not too hard to screw up. So I remember my, um, I would pour it and I'd get these old funky uh, liquor bottles, and I'm like. It just smacked of history and heritage. So when I did this, I wanted to kind of, I need something like that. Um, yeah. And so uh, I, when I saw Bullet Bourbon, I liked the circle. And uh, so we came And up. actually, too, uh, you can do custom labels. So if you purchase these on casewinelife.com, oh, yeah. um, you know, smash that like button, casewinelife.com. Thank you. Uh, you know, so if you purchase these, then you can go on to Tribute's website. And you can customize your labels. So if you want to do a happy birthday or yeah, happy yeah. anniversary. Happy or Father's or Day, Mom's Day. Congratulations on your retirement. You I know, want whatever. a divorce. Or, 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 or. <laughs> yeah, happy yeah. divorce to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like whatever. Happy Wednesday. Happy, yeah. Happy yeah. hump day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's cool. It's free. Um, All these house wines. There, there you, you know, go. You right? just, it just hit, it's custom label. And uh, in like 10 days, you get this uh, thing. And it's super easy. It's like five lines. Like, what do you want to do? What do you want it sent? And boom. And you crack and peel it over. It's kind of cool. Customization at yeah. its best. Yeah. That's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. I think uh, certified, cert, or certified sustainable for like 100 years, customizing labels, um, inspired by bullet bourbon, uh, for <laughs> mom. How much more do you guys want? Uh, for... The reserve cab. Okay. Yeah. And so, <laughs> boom. So, so um, uh, full disclosure, we opened this yesterday because it's a, it's a big tight wine and it's it still is. young it's a big boy it's oh a it's God. a it's tight one yesterday so um this is all about the vineyard right this is all about the terroir so where we live um the major geological feature is sonoma mountain it sticks up all by itself it's a freestanding volcano kind of like a, a, a you know like a pimple right just kind of up there and when the weather comes off the pacific the monument up the street. yeah there you go it hits it hits sonoma mountain and it gets the weather gets pushed down into the um, Canaros through the Petaluma wing gap and cools down the Canaros. Hooray for that. Or it gets shunted up into Lake County and uh, does whatever it does up in Lake County. But <laughs> when the weather comes over Sonoma Mountain, it rushes down and then it gets caught against the Mayacamas Mountains. So it spins in this little valley that's about seven miles wide, four miles um, well, across. And it creates, it heats up. It's like a natural hot pocket. Like that snack food. Hot, hot pocket. pocket. Hot pocket. Um, and he can sing, uh, not really, um, no, but it, that heats up so it's great for Bordeaux varieties because south is, is too cool. That's great for uh, Pinot Noirs and Chardonnays and the same going 
um, the other direction, but here it's hot and the volcano blew up. So again, we're getting the geological lasagna. So you get those two things and then farming it biodynamically, boom. And the cool thing about 17 was that that was the year of the fires. So we picked this Saturday early in the morning, three, four, five, six, seven in the morning. Sunday, 12 hours late, uh, 24 hours later, this whole area was burning. It burned the fence post, the barn, the pump house, but not the vineyard. I get a little fire on the nose. I know it's fire. psychological. It's this is the fire, fire cab. <laughs> oh, I got the wrong one. Um, but here, uh, this is big. It's big black fruit, uh, little uh, chocolate, maybe smoke. a little uh, little tar. Tar. You know? Oh, yeah. not kind just of smoke, like tar. Dude, what, Mike. You should know this. What other wine has tar? Oh, what, what, what's your what, oh, what's God. your favorite? I hate what's it. your favorite? And, and oh, uh, uh, Brunello, Barolo. Yeah, yeah. Nebbiolo. And and and, and, and yeah. tar sounds awful. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. And it, it, <laughs> yeah, and and we're not we're not talking we're not talking you know uh, asphalt, but it's just this hint like you're on a jetty or something like that, and it's just subtle, right? It's a it's a it's a secondary tertiary flavor. Um, so we harvest it. The cool thing about this is it's all wild yeast fermentation. And there's about 200 yeasts that um, ferment. 13 of our yeasts are unique to our property because we've been doing this for over 20 years. And so yeast is, is one of those unsung heroes. It's big in brewing, right? Obviously, beer's, you know. Living organism. Yeah, yeah. and in wine, it, it, it does too. So there's probably about 13 different yeasts, and each one has its stage. I kind of, they're kind of like, imagine um, a frat boy. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll uh, li- when we come back, we'll talk about wild yeast. Cool. How's that? Today's show and all our shows is sponsored by CaseWineLife.com, where you get free shipping on most cases. And because we have Chris today here, if you walk into the taste room and say, hey, I saw the show, you get instantly 10% off at Benzinger's Tasting Room. Please come by. We'd love to have you. So one of the uh, things about biodynamics and that makes this wine really interesting is the fact that we use wild yeast. Most wines are made with commercial yeast that are very efficient, uh, and they're good, um, but they're clean. They don't leave behind any uh, detritus that makes the wine really interesting, but wild yeast does. And we have 13 yeasts working in this wine, and they're like little frat boys. And what I mean by that is the first guy gets the party going, he's like, woo, and he's having a good time, and then he finally uh, fades out. Then the next guy picks up the ball, and he gets the wine fermenting, gets it to three, four, five. The next guy takes over, six, seven, eight, next guy up there, and they finally get to about 13.5, 14% alcohol. Then they all pass out. And like a good frat party, they leave a huge mess. But this mess are these unfermentable complex sugars that don't add sweetness, but they add a textural component on the palate that give these wines a certain joie de vie that brings the wine alive. Um, And wild yeast, they're tough, but once you get the handle on how to do it, they're really easy to kind of get through fermentation, ferment to dryness, and they add that a little bit of a wow factor to the wine. Yeah, lots of complexity and yeah. It's like the difference between a lap dog and a hunting dog. You know? What's the difference? You know, lap dog is like, <laughs> oh, so, and, the, and the hunting dog's like bounding through the woods, just wild, you know? Like that's what that you want with the, with the yeast. And it, it helps because these are big grapes. This is called the, the Sunny Slope Vineyard. And it's warm, it's diverse geology, it's farmed biodynamically. Um, what's not like? And in full dec- disclosure, we opened this last night because it is so Still big. packs a punch, yeah. though. This is your big Cali cab, guys. You're going to want this. Buy the case. Free shipping for sure. How much does this retail for, Holly? Where are we? Oh, they're, they're, they're in, the, in the tasting room, this is going to be about 55 to 60 bucks. Yeah. I, it's a six-pack, so it's case a six is pack. And, and then it is available here in very limited locations on-premise, usually. But we have... We have um, uh, Virginia's uh, one of these amazing states that have decided to bring in some of my more esoteric upper end wines. And so they're sprinkled about. Okay. Amazing cab. You guys know I'm not a cab lover at all. Full disclosure. Um, What's your favorite wine? I'm I, partial to this tribute right now. Yeah, it's good. I but I mean, if you. If, Helen, and I'm partial <laughs> to this tribute right I, now. I, I, to be honest with you, it's so funny. My, my tastes have, have migrated. I used to be nothing but the big chewy cabs. 
I've way backed off. I'm drinking a lot of Pinot Noirs now. I love, because Pinot Noir is like the missing link in wine. Like my niece Jamie does a nice job doing it. It's just, just my personal thing. But but at least her wines have Pinot Noirness to it. It's it's delicious. But the wines that they wash out all the Pinot Noirness and make this. To make them taste like cabs. Yeah, and I, I just don't understand that. Or they're trying to get to where Merlot was, right? And Merlot is a great, great wine. It just got beat up because California got greedy and made too much crappy Merlot. Okay, and then sideways. Try a Benzinger Merlot and you will change your mind because yeah. that Benzinger Merlot is, is, I wish we had it here today because it is pretty stellar. It, it, yeah. I'm thinking that Benzinger Merlot it tastes a lot Merlot. like those Washington State Merlots that we love. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, um, and we add uh, a little bit of Cabernet to give it some, some girth. I don't know if that's the right word. To give it a little more structure, because mm -hmm. Cabernet is is like if if wine if wine was your body, right? A Cabernet is your muscles, right? But you look weird just having a muscle suit. So skin is the Merlot. It adds that suppleness. Um, and uh, Cabernet Franc are like your love handles. If I was a blend, I'd have a lot of Cabernet Franc. <laughs> and then Petit Verdot is your sinew, and Malbec is kind of like a little bit of your personality. And the Syrah. Um, what would Syrah be? Well, it's not really a Bordeaux variety, but we put Syrahs are in a lot of wines. Maybe a little spice or something, right? Sp there like you a go. Little, a little salt I think it's the attitude. I think a little pepper. attitude. Yeah, a little Syrah's your attitude. Little too. Little too. I like yeah. it. I like it. Chris, how are you guys so successful while being so easily confused with Behringer? Oh my God. <laughs> I can't this tell you. I've question. been called Chris Behringer more times than Chris Benziger. <laughs> Chris I've Berger? also been called Chris Benzinger because they want to throw an extra N in there. I've actually had people go to Behringer, call me up and go, hey, where are you? And I'm like, uh, here in the parking lot. Goes, so am I, I'm by the big gate. I'm like, yeah, okay, you're in Napa. And all oh. of a sudden, there's this awkward silence on the yeah. phone. I'll be, there in 50, I'll be there in 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Somehow you guys have carved a niche for great wine. We're, l we're lucky. Um, again, it goes down to family passion. I think so. And we also partnered up with a great company called The Wine Group who believes in us and they support us. Um, and they've been kind of a, a beautiful sugar daddy for us and help us in the, in the, particularly in the marketplace. Thank you, Chelsea. Where, where we don't, you know, we're just a small family business. We don't quite have the pull now and they help pull us. So, and so we're talking about the business side. Production of tribute is what a year? Oh God, um, that's probably 20,000 cases right now. I would like to go up a little bit. My vineyards can handle a little bit more. Hopefully the brand takes off. It's relatively new. Please support it. It's a lovely wine. We're also, for we do this Pets for Patriot program with it um, at certain uh, restaurants and retailers. So look for that. Uh, two things I love the most are- It's a pretty cool charity. They, um, they support uh, rescue animals um, and uh, to, adopt them to, bring needy, them to needy vets. To needy vets. Yeah, yeah, and they say both. It's a, and it's a really a one woman show too. She's amazing. Um, the the Chardonnay is about eighteen thousand cases. The Sauvignon Blanc about fifteen. That bad boy is about twelve hundred cases. Very small production. Yeah, six packs. Twelve hundred six packs. Twelve hundred six packs. Yeah. yeah, even smaller. Yeah. Okay, I get it. And worth every penny. And you know, we, I'd love for you to either come out to California and we could do a real one just on biodynamics because we just scrap. I didn't even talk about my sheep. We I got, I got, I got sheep. Dorper sheep, the, the cutest sheep. They're, they're small sheep that cruise under the vine. Free and landscapers, want, basically. They, they, yeah, they one step, <laughs> their little cloven nose are pushing debris down. They're eating underneath the vine so they don't have to use uh, glyphosate Roundup and they're dropping the fertilizer out the back end fertilizing the land as they go. And it's a miracle. And after they've done all the work, you can eat them. With Pinot Noir. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Just kidding. We're all vegetarians out in California. You know that. We love sheep. Yes. Hey, we love Behringer's, no, Benzinger's <laughs> sheep. We love Benzinger's sheep in particularly. Yes. This has been an awesome Benger show. Benzinger doesn't have any sheep. Hasn't it? Your Behringer doesn't have any sheep. They just have a lot of cash. They, <laughs> they probably do. This has been an awesome show. You are coming back. We are going to Sonoma. We're going to have fun. We're going to have a Here lot of fun. We're going to get arrested. <laughs> um, all these wines you will find on casewinelife.com. Go to the tasting room, get 10% off. Just mention the show. Chris, love you, bro. Dude, thank you. Thank and you, and please come out and visit the winery. You won't be, I know I'm biased, but it's one of the more beautiful places on the planet. Jack Lennon called the Valley of the Moon, little town of Glen Ellen, hour north of the Golden Gate Bridge. 
Come out there. It's legit rated so nobody's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reinvigorate your romance. Yeah. Bring your wife. Have some fun. Wife, bring your husband. Bring your girlfriend. Bring your girlfriend. Bring your partner. Bring whatever. Bring come out and have fun. Just come out and have fun yeah. on Chris's tab. <laughs> yeah. That, that'll get you really far. <laughs> go for it. That'll get you to the neighborhood pub. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the London Lodge. Yeah, we call, we call it the lower office. The lower office. I love it. Like, we're going for sure. If yeah. We're going first. Ask for office. Leanne, the bartender. She's the best. That's our first stop. We'll get to Sonoma, the lower office. Awesome. Salute. Dude, thank you. Thank you. Holly, thank you. Right. A lot of fun. Salute. And thank you. <laughs>